All right, welcome to the video guidelines for your dietary analysis one assignment. Uh, in this brief video, it, I'm going to take you through the process of doing a 24 hour dietary recall and then talk about the expectations for the first uh, dietary analysis assignment. Uh, firstly, we'll just start on Blackboard. Uh, obvious stuff, right? Under the assignments link, you'll find the guidelines and the submission link for the assignment. Uh, there's some guidelines for the other assignments that you have. And there's dietary analysis one. Uh, you can go ahead and click on that. And if you scroll about halfway down the screen, you have this link to the document. Please look at this document first. Um, I won't come back to this screen in this demonstration for the assignment submission, just like your, all your other assignments, you'll have the opportunity here to click uh, the Browse My Computer button. That will allow you to upload a file that's been saved on your computer that includes the necessary information for this assignment. That's the way I recommend doing it. Uh, writing the submission directly on here, some, some of you like to copy and paste, that's not ideal. Um, so I do most highly suggest use the attached files uh, function for this and all assignments. Here is the link for the guidelines of this assignment. If you click on it, uh, depending on what type of web browser you're using, the file should upload somewhere. I'm using Google Chrome right now, so the link appears down here in the bottom left. Um, I will click on it, and there is the guidelines for dietary analysis one. Uh, the purpose of this uh, assignment, it's pretty straightforward. In the world of nutrition, um, in the field of nutrition, being able to analyze somebody's diet for adequacy and other factors associated with whether their performance or health related goals is a pretty important skill and a pretty important task to understand how to do. That's the main purpose of this assignment. Uh, so to start, before you do anything, you need to spend a 24 hour period making sure that you write down everything you eat and drink that day. So from the time you wake up until the time you go to sleep, um, even midnight snacks should count, write it down. And more, more importantly, or as important as writing it all down, write down the volumes, like be as specific and particular and precise and accurate as you can with everything you eat. You know, don't just say I had a burrito, uh, do your best, understand was it a big burrito, was it a little burrito, was it, you know, I had eggs, well, how many eggs, were they big eggs, were they little eggs? I put some cheese on it, how much cheese? Was it a sliced cheese, was it some grated cheese? The more time you take in measuring the foods that you consume, the more accurate this analysis will be. Uh, these types of analyses have the potential to be pretty accurate. There's some error built in automatically with all of them. Um, so the more careless you are about recording your foods, which means you're gonna be more careless with entering your foods into the software, uh, the more you're playing just a guessing game with what's what your diet's all about. So I really like to emphasize right now, be as particular as possible and, and specific as possible about the food and, and drinks that you consume. I don't suggest that you add any supplements that you take to this 24-hour 24, 24 recall. Um, vitamins and minerals, okay. Uh, supplements like a, a protein shake and all that stuff, okay. You take them. Uh, but really the purpose of this assignment and generally the dietary analyses are to understand the food that you're consuming and supplements aren't considered food. Of course, if you add a multivitamin to, to your 24 hour daily uh, food intake, you're going to be hitting all your targets for vitamins and minerals. And then you're really not going to know if your, your, your diet's adequate or not. So please exclude those for the purposes of this assignment. You can still, of course, consume them. Uh, so that 24 hour uh, period then of recording your foods, very important. Uh, once you've done that, uh, the software that I suggest and actually kind of require you to use, we used to use a whole bunch of different ones in this class. A uh, software I require you to use now is called chronometer.com. It's an online uh, software dietary analysis program. They have an app. I think the app costs like $1.99. Uh, I have not used the app myself. I use the computer version, which is free. Uh, and the app from the students I have had use it um, feedback is that the app is useful, uh, it's somewhat easy to use, not as easy as the computer version. Um, and then from my end, from the teacher end of the equation, the app doesn't give as much information about your diet as the computer version does. So I suggest avoiding the app if possible. So please use a, use the online version, the, the 
you know, .com version. So, uh, so chronometer.com is where you're going to go. We're going to visit that site in just a second. Um, this is where you're going to enter all your foods and it's going to give you a, a, basically a printout or analysis of everything you eat. Um, and so what I want as part of this assignment, and the first part of your assignment, I guess, would be to make sure that you take screenshots or somehow attach your chronometer results to this assignment. So I can double check what you're talking about is actually what happened in your diet. Um, and usually this is easy, most easily accomplished by just taking a few screenshots. Uh, the chronometer analysis probably takes up about two pages on most computers. So most screenshots can capture it in about two screenshots. Um, my suggestion is take the screenshot, copy and paste it to your Word document that you do the write-up on, and then you just submit that as one document. That tends to be the best way to do it. Um, yeah, there are other ways, but I, I'd like to suggest that one because it seems to be the most uh, seamless process. Um, so once you've done this 24 hour recall, I just ask you to do some analysis of the results. Uh, I ask you some pretty straightforward questions. Obviously, you know, type these up in a Word document. Uh, how many calories did you consume this day? Chronometer will give you that number. We're going to visit the, them in a second. Um, did you feel this number is accurate? Why or why not? So most of you might have an opinion about, oh yeah, I eat about 2,000 calories a day. Uh, the chronometer, once you set it up, it'll tell you how much you should be eating according to them. Um, but you know, you might say, oh, I feel like I eat way more than I burn because it'll tell you how much energy you're burning, how much they think. Um, and so you may be surprised by the number. So explain to me why you think the number on chronometer is accurate and why you, you may not think it's accurate. Uh, and then also say, is this appropriate for you? Assuming the numbers are accurate or based off of those numbers, is that an appropriate amount? If you're trying to gain weight and you're eating only 1,000 calories a day and your metabolism says you're burning through 3,000 calories a day, you're not going to accomplish your goal of weight gaining weight if you're 2,000 calories in deficit every day. So explain to me, is this caloric intake uh, in line with any goals you may have? Uh, the next question asks about macronutrient distribution. Um, so this is where I want to know what percent of your total calories are coming from carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, right? Uh, chronometer, it, it can be a little bit confusing to some of you for this. Uh, the sum of the three must equal 100% unless you consumed alcohol. Of course, if you consume alcohol, put it on there. Um, so I'll show you how to find those percentages on, on the chronometer, but I just want to know, yeah, I'm eating 50% carbs, 20% protein, 30% fat in my diet. Um, once you've identified that distribution, is this a healthy or balanced distribution? We haven't talked much about macronutrient distribution in this class. So, you know, I do talk about the macronutrients separately um, and say, oh, yeah, well, carb intake can be anywhere from zero to 80 percent. Fat intake should not be below 15, 20. That's for sure. But it could also be up to 80 percent protein. It should kind of hover. So I never talk about I don't talk about the three of them together often. I've added a little video to the to the page where this video was found. Um, and it talks about sort of the macronutrient distribution uh, strategies and ideas and what might be best for you. Or at least, you know, if you have a weight gain goal, weight loss goal, regular health goal, what sh what balance should you be in? So you can check out that video. It's, it's also quite short, maybe six or seven minutes. Um, but it talks about that macronutrient balance. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is yeah, examine the micronutrients. The micronutrients are your vitamins and minerals. And so on Chronometer, uh, you'll see it gives a little bar graph and a percent of how much of your daily need of those micronutrients you've consumed. Um, so firstly, are there any that you're consuming greater than 200% of? Are you getting 200% vitamin C? Whatever it is, identify those. Um, are you deficient? Are you getting less than 50% of any nutrients? Um, so look at the chronometer and just make a list. Uh, tell me the deficient ones. And for each deficient one, please identify at least one natural food source for each. So, hey, I'm, I'm deficient in iron. Uh, here's a couple good sources of iron. Uh, pretty straightforward section. Uh, question four, uh, provide a general comment on the quality of your diet. So this is your chance to play your, your own nutritionist. Like you're evaluating your diet for what you think and consider is healthy. Is it full of processed foods and junk foods? Is it super high in sugar, super low in protein? You know, what do you think about your own diet? Is it a good diet? Is it not? And, and give it an honest analysis. Like, oh, you know, I think it's great. I eat tons of real food. I cook everything for myself. Everything is local, in season, organic. You know, it's I'm jerfing. I'm jerfing it. 
And so it's great, or maybe not. And so talk about those deviations, talk about why you think it's good, and maybe why not. Um, and then finally, be specific here, make three recommendations to improve it. It could be something as simple as, yeah, I realize I don't drink any water. I should drink more water throughout the day. Um, it can be a little bit more elaborate than that, you know, maybe with strategies. Hey, I eat out every meal. I think I should just cook for myself. That's not necessarily a dietary change, but that's a dietary strategy change, right? Food preparation change. So, um, so you know, answer all these sections. Be as thorough as possible, right? There's some points associated here. Um, let's move over to the chronometer. Um, there is an example of the chronometer printout at the bottom of the guidelines, but let's actually go to the chronometer page. So when you visit chronometer, um, it is pretty user friendly. One thing you should do, all of you, is uh, enter a profile for yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, this is in my ballpark. I, I faked some of this stuff. Um, I surely can't be that old, right? Um, so enter your information on the chronometer because what it does is not only takes well, it takes your information and it calculates uh, energy expenditure for you. It estimates you know, your nutrient needs. And so when you look at your analysis, it'll be in comparison to what you put in. So if you put in fake numbers, it's going to give you some uh, values that may not match up with exactly what they should be. So uh, there's yeah, opportunity to enroll in a couple of research studies. I'm not enrolled in these because I don't use chronometer often enough. But if you're someone who's going to use a chronometer, I think it's a good opportunity to contribute to our scientific understanding. I always think that's a good opportunity, but that's up to you guys. Um, you can put it in weight goal as well. And so you can you know, say, hey, I wanna maintain weight, I wanna gain weight, I wanna lose weight. It'll help you with then some of its analysis um, feedback on whether or not you're reaching those goals with your diet. Um, you can customize some of the nutrient targets. It'll just give you, it'll give you some um, flexibility in what it shows you and what it doesn't show you. Uh, so right now I have, yeah, energy intake uh, is visible, right? How, now it has me between 1,500 and 2,200 calories a day. Um, you know, on my more active days, yeah, 2,200. And on my non-active days, yeah, maybe 1,500. So, um, and then, yeah, macronutrient targets, it lets you uh, manipulate these. And so I put in fixed targets for myself. You can do whatever you want. Um, the the options here you can if you're on a high fat keto diet um yeah the the high carb diet the 30 bananas a day car diet uh paleo zone even which is just a basically a, you know 40 30 30 like a, a very similar to the zone diet actually um you know they, they let you sort of manipulate your intakes um what's cool and as chronometer has been growing it's allowing you to sync with some of your uh, wearable so uh, devices if you have them link it up so cool, right? Um, so I do I do use uh, chronometer with my, a lot of my clients and those that are synced with these uh, devices. I always think it's awesome because I see all their data in addition to their diet stuff. So, all right. So once you've done your profile, head over to the diary section. Uh, this is just a day's worth of food that I threw in there. Adding a food is quite simple. So you get to your 24 hour list of foods um, and let's just say you had a, I don't know, the, well, so actually, let me give you a tip here. So one of the things that the database is best at is individual foods. If you just had an avocado, awesome. It'll have an avocado in there. But let's say I had an avocado egg and cheese sandwich. Let me just try that. Let's see what it does, actually. Um, avocado egg and cheese sandwich. Um, no results found. Is that how you spell sandwich? Is it ICH? No. ICH. Uh, so let's just see if there's anything with avocado, egg, and cheese. Nope. Avocado and egg. Okay. So we do have some choices with avocado and egg. Um, did you eat any of these, right? And so some of them are prepackaged things, something from Panera, um, Tesco egg, avocado, and quinoa sandwich, uh, salad. So there's, you know, there's some uh, restaurant type of recipes in here already that's great um, but what if you just made it at home my suggestion for those types of foods and i know it's cumbersome but it's worth the effort i think is you know what i'm just going to enter in each on my own so i add in the avocado yeah it was an avocado um yeah black skin california type of course we live in california um so i'll enter that in so i hit that 
here is my option for the avocado. Did I have a whole avocado? Maybe I only had half. I can manipulate the serving size by putting in 0.5 or for half. Or we can even switch the units. Um, I had a cup of mashed avocado. That would be like guacamole. Um, but a cup is a lot. Um, so it gives you options to manipulate, manipulate the units and the serving size. In this case, each means each, meaning one avocado each. So let's just say I had half of an avocado. That's the case. I'd hit add serving. Um, on the left here, it even gives you some of the already the nutrition nutrition or nutrient breakdown of the avocado itself. Um, yeah, lots of fat, a little bit of carbs, not so much protein. Uh, so you hit add serving and you from there, you just build your day um, in terms of food intake. And so again, I didn't want to add to this day just because. Um, so as you build your day of foods, be as specific as possible, right? Your list might get long, no big deal. You can scroll down here and you get the results from the chronometer. And so as you add each food, this changes as each food is added. And so if we look at this um, in pretty big font, it says 2,597 calories consumed. And in this case, 2,379 calories burned. If this was me, I guess it is. Um, you know, I ate a little bit more than I burned, but I'm actually pretty much in the ballpark. Um, again, these neither of these two numbers come from an exact science, so it's like, oh yeah, pretty pretty close to being balanced. Um, chronometer uses this graphic. The muscle little icon there is protein. That little droplet is fat, and that is carbohydrates. This just shows a snapshot of the proportion of each of those that makes up your diet. Doesn't give you number. On your assignment, I'm asking for numbers. So if you hover the mouse over the little muscle, it says protein. 14%. And so in this case, I ate 14% of my diet came from protein. Hover over fat, 76% of my diet came from fat. And then I hover over carbohydrates and that says 10% came from carbohydrates. The three of those added together should add up to 100%. Um, down here, it gives different percentages. So this is where a lot of students get confused. So it says protein, well, it says, this is energy, so that's my calorie intake. Um, it says protein 91.5 grams. I will, I will ask you that on the uh, dietary analysis two assignment, um, protein 95 grams. Um, in this case, that's 163% of my daily need for protein. So when I ask you your macronutrient distribution, do not put 163% because your diet can't be 163% protein. Can't be over hundred percent of anything, right? So this is a different sort of look at the composition of your diet. Um, carbs in this case, 67 grams. That was 52% of my daily need for carbs. And then fat, I had 222 grams, which was 300% of my daily need for fat. Again, those numbers I'm not necessarily asking for specifically. Um, I'm asking for these percentages up here. Uh, the scrolling down, this gives you more specifics now. And so nutrient targets. So chronometer, and you can customize this. It gives you how much you've consumed of certain targets. So I consumed 80% of my fiber. When I hover over it, it says I had 30 grams of fiber. 96% uh, of my daily iron needs. It tells me how many milligrams I consumed. It's not very much, actually. Um, so it gives you the values for all these nutrients um, just in a snapshot. And then you scroll down, and it gives you even more details, right? And so uh, we have energy. We have water. I didn't add the water I consumed. I should do that. Bad habit. Um, Carbohydrates, fats, proteins, it even gives you breakdown of all the individual amino acids. If there's targets for any of the specific amino acids, for the essential amino acids there are, and even for some non-essential ones. Um, and then we have our vitamins and minerals. And so I was asking about deficiency or uh, over-consuming any. So I have, you know, I'm 60% for B1 and B3, so I'm not below that 50% threshold. Uh, vitamin D, oh, 40, 40%. So if this was you or if this was me on my assignment, I'd have to say, yep, I'm identifying the vitamin D as being deficient and some foods high in vitamin D are, I don't know, um, sardines with the bones and skins, right? Yum. Um, so uh, I was excessive in vitamin A. I don't have to tell you any foods associated with it. Um, one thing the chronometer does, which I think is quite nice, is when you hover over the 500% here in this case, it tells you where the vitamin A is coming from in your diet, right? Um, lots of vitamin A, in my case, from that romaine lettuce. I had, I know it wasn't that much lettuce, but um, lots of vitamin A there. So uh, what else from the chronometer? So you scroll down, it finishes with the 
the minerals down here. Uh, sodium, yeah, sodium's a bit high. It does usually give red as an indicator of foods when they're consumed in excess that might be dangerous. It identifies sodium as being something dangerous when consumed in excess, excess excuse me. Um, whereas in this case, yeah, that 500% of vitamin A, man, no big deal, we'll survive. Um, but they, you know, they want to highlight some potential nutrients that might be of health concern. So I think that's it. Um, be sure. So what I like to do is then for your screenshots is maybe even shrink the screen down a little bit so you can fit at least all your foods in here. Take a screenshot of this and then scroll up a bit to capture the rest. And again, this is probably a three screenshot type of thing. So, you know, capture this middle portion and then capture this bottom portion. Three screenshots, add each of them to your Word document and you're done.